Hi, I'm Ange Simmons. Um, I'm going to present on a platform for semantic integration of heterogeneous sensor sources. I am from Deakin University, Australia, and this project is funded by the Australian Office of National Intelligence. Um, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the project goal. Uh, then I'm going to move into talking about uh, modeling, sensors, and environment. Um, and finally, what I'm going to focus on uh, is making inferences of what's going on uh, given sensor observations. I'm going to talk a bit about the Bayesian approach, uh, which I started on last year. Um, and then I'm going to talk about a large language model approach uh, that I've been focusing on more recently. So the goal of this project was to create a platform for integration of heterogeneous sensor sources. Uh, so uh, whether the information is observed by a surveillance camera um, or signals coming from a microphone, other signal sources, um, or even social media can be viewed as another type of sensor. The idea is, uh, given all these different uh, signal observations, make an inference of uh, the probability that it's an attack um, or just a normal situation. Um, and if it's an attack, uh, what kind of attack? Um, specifically, uh, we don't just want to surface up uh, low-level sensor observations. Uh, we want to try and infer the bigger picture of what's going on uh, so that an intelligence officer can respond as soon as possible. So uh, to do this and infer the underlying cause of observed signals, we need uh, two things. Uh, firstly, we need some sort of model of the context. Uh, so which uh, sensor observed the signal? And there's existing standards for modeling sensor networks. Um, and secondly, we need some sort of uh, model of the building or environment that that sensor is located in. Um, what I'm going to focus on is the inference engine side. So given these sensor observations, uh, what's the most likely underlying cause uh, or causes uh, that could have led to those observations? So um, for modeling the sensor network itself, uh, we can use the W3C semantic sensor network ontology, uh, which uh, just captures um, what sensor made an observation uh, at what time, what was the result, um, and critically, what kind of sensor is it? So is it observing temperature, or is it looking for a certain type of object in a surveillance video? <laughs> We also need uh, some model of the environment. So in the case of buildings, uh, we use Real Estate Corp, uh, which captures not just the name, um, but uh, what type of room, for example, it is. So um, we can capture, is it a conference room? Is it a dining room? And based on whether an event is in a dining room or a conference room, that can influence the interpretation of what might be going on. So, um, the critical part is the inference engine. So we need some sort of knowledge of the possible causes of a signal to reason. So as a concrete example, say a microphone picks up the sound of smash glass. A human intelligence officer would reason, um, maybe it's someone breaking in through a window, or maybe uh, someone's just dropped a tray of glasses in the dining area. To make a decision, the human intelligence officer will take into account everything they know. So uh, where's that sensor located, uh, what's nearby. Uh, but when it comes to automated inferences, uh, this can present um, a challenge uh, because um, to a human intelligence officer, uh, all the possible causes of uh, breaking glass are obvious. Um, but uh, for a machine, uh, where does it get that information? Our initial approach uh, was uh, based on Bayesian inference, uh, where we model out all the possible attacks and all the possible non-attacks and each of the signals they could create. So in this case, um, an attacker breaking through a window uh, would create the sound of breaking glass, as would an employee dropping a tray of glasses. And we model the fact uh, that uh, that sound could get picked up by a microphone um, and how it falls off uh, with distance. Uh, we then uh, re convert that into a Bayesian network um, and basically perform Bayesian inference 
given that my sensor has observed the sound of glass, and given everything I know about the way sound propagates and where that microphone is located, uh, is it more likely that this is an attack or just, say, an employee dropping a tray of glasses? So uh, this is great in theory for simple scenarios, um, but uh, there's a practical issue that it requires a human to model every possible form of attack and non-attack. So this is a more complex example where we were modeling, um, is it an attacker or say just a student eating, taking into account, um, has a person been detected? Is there a knife? Is there a fork? And are they carrying a cell phone? So um, around this time, uh, large language models such as GPT-4 came out um, and we wanted to investigate, could they alleviate uh, some of the effort um, on the human um, to uh, capture these uh, detailed models? Uh, so uh, the one simple way we could do this uh, is we tell GPT to reason like an intelligence officer. Um, we give it um, our context, uh, which still comes uh, from um, modeling the building and the sensors. So for example, we tell it that microphone one is a sensor located in a type of conference room. Uh, camera one is a sensor located uh, also in the conference room. Uh, we tell it uh, all the observations that we've picked up. So for example, camera one might uh, be running some sort of object recognition model that detects a knife. Microphone one uh, might be running some sort of sound recognition model that detects the sound of glass. Um, and then we just ask it to reason about the level of threat um, and classify it as green, orange, red. In the case of mathematical uh, problems, uh, we know it's better to ask it to reason step by step um, in chain of thought rather than just jumping to uh, the answer. Um, similarly, uh, for intelligence problems, our reasoning is we want it to reason like a human considering uh, all the possible possibilities rather than just jumping to a uh, conclusion. Um, I'm not going to go through this, uh, but this is an example of the chain of thought uh, that GPT goes through, uh, considering um, the different possible causes that could have led to uh, those observations. Um, in the end, it classifies it as orange because um, a knife and a sound of glass uh, could indicate uh, some form of danger, but there's also possible innocent causes for that. Uh, we then tried to test the whole approach end to end. Uh, so uh, we took a surveillance video. Um, these are just um, an existing data set, uh, UCF Chrome, uh, converted it to text. Uh, in this case, I've converted it manually, uh, but we also looked at taking um, fully automated approaches. Um, and then uh, given that video description, uh, we prompt GPT uh, to reason about uh, what possible uh, types of crimes it is, uh, if any, um, and then uh, to provide the most likely category. Uh, now, while we've done it for surveillance videos, you could use the same approach for anything else. Uh, so for example, if you had sounds, uh, you could uh, create a description of those sounds. Uh, if it was social media, uh, you could just take the text of this. Um, and uh, because it's all text, you could also integrate a different uh, Modalities. So, for example, we could have a description of the video along with uh, the description of the sound. Uh, for the evaluation, though, uh, we just focused uh, on surveillance videos uh, because uh, that's uh, what data is publicly available. Uh, we convert the video to text and then test how accurately uh, GPT, in this case, uh, can uh, classify the type of crime uh, given the textual description of that video. Uh, there's uh, in our data set 13 uh, concrete categories of crime uh, plus normal. Uh, we try uh, both uh, asking it to reason about my manual description of the video, uh, as well as trying automated approach uh, where we uh, describe what's happening in frames at 10 seconds intervals, and then see how well GPT can reason about uh, the overall video. Uh, what we found is uh, with the manual descriptions, GPT uh, was able to achieve a good performance, 58% uh, category accuracy, uh, which isn't bad considering there was 13 levels and even as a human, um, I struggled sometimes. Um, unfortunately though, when we tried to automate the entire process end to end, um, including an automated video to text step, uh, we weren't able to perform uh, much better than random. 
Um, I'll give you a little bit of insight into why we think this is. Um, firstly, uh, when it comes to traditional image appro captioning approaches to describe what's going on in your frame, uh, they often uh, lack detail because of the kind of data they're being uh, trained on. Um, also, uh, they won't include enough information to uh, make links between different frames. Uh, large language model based digital models uh, hallucinate. Um, I'll give a little bit more of an example uh, in the next slide of that. Uh, we tried object tracking uh, algorithms, but unfortunately it tends to lose track of the identity of people over time, which is obviously important when reasoning about crime. Um, so for example, if someone leaves a store uh, to know if that's shoplifting, you need to know was that the same person that paid for it before or not. Um, and uh, finally, um, we tried object detection, uh, but uh, a lot of the off-the-shelf models uh, were trained on data sets like Coco, which I just don't include reference. Um, as an example of the hallucination I talked about, uh, this is generated by Microsoft's Lava Large Language and Video Assistant. Uh, the ground truth image on the left is actually a scene from a fight surveillance uh, video. Um, I'm not sure if you can tell from this, um, but there's some people uh, picking up chairs um, and uh, women there trying to uh, pull uh, the guy away. Uh, unfortunately, though, uh, when the large language vision assistant tries to describe it, it says it's a group of me young men. Uh, it says there's a microwave. I'm not sure where that came from and describes it as enjoyment and camaraderie. Um, so uh, this is an example of what I mean by hallucination. Um, uh, the LLM-based approaches to uh, video translation uh, tend to introduce um, some uh, output that doesn't seem to be tied uh, to uh, what's actually going on. And so while it sounds good, it introduces misleading information, uh, which makes uh, reasoning difficult, uh, which um, I'm speculating uh, may be part of the reason that we were only achieving slightly better than random accuracy when uh, doing the fully end-to-end -end automated uh, reasoning approach. So uh, in conclusion, uh, open standards are available for describing sensor networks and environments and helping capture the context of what's going on. Uh, that's still very important to support reasoning. Uh, Bayesian approaches to inference are theoretically sound and sound good for simple examples, uh, but in practice uh, require the human to model every possible attack and non-attack um, and uh, every observation that can occur as part of that. Uh, large language models um, from our initial exploration um, appear promising, uh, but our work hasn't uh, yet been uh, peer reviewed. Um, and also our approaches to our attempts to fully automate that process, including the video to text uh, stage, um, introduce problems in that the video to text isn't able to reliably capture the details of crimes um, as well as hallucination, uh, which leads to incorrect uh, final uh, conclusions. Uh, if uh, you're interested to learn more, uh, the first part of uh, this talk where I talked about uh, capturing uh, the sensor network, the building, and performing Bayesian inference over that uh, was published at the International Semantic Web Conference 2022 towards reading about the underlying causes of sensor observations. Uh, the second part of the talk, our experiments aren't yet peer reviewed, um, but uh, our description is on archive, uh, zero shot detection of crime uh, using uh, large language models. Uh, thank you for listening.